Today is the twelfth Sunday after Pentecost, and the epistles taken from St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, and such confidence we have through Christ towards God, not that we are sufficient to think anything of ourselves as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who hath also made us fit ministers of the New Testament, not in the letter, but in the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit quickeneth. Now the ministration of death, engraven upon letters upon stones, was so glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which is made void. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather in glory? For the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more the ministration of justice aboundeth in glory. <clears throat> Our sufficiency is from God. God works through us as instruments. It is our duty to do His will completely, and thus be good instruments, as St. Paul was. Now this is a statement of humility. Do we brag about all the good things we have done? Any good that comes from us comes from God and through us as His instrument. Let us remember what we truly are, and we will say with St. Paul, Our sufficiency is from God. <clears throat> Self-sufficiency is a sign of pride. I can do it myself. Or, we must do it my way. Or, my way or the highway. These are all the attitudes of pride and hell. Thy will be done, as we pray in the Our Father, should be our rule of life. Please stand for the Gospel. <clears throat> and the Gospel is taken from St. Luke. At that time, turning to his disciples, he said, Blessed are the eyes that see the things which you see. For I say to you that many prophets and kings have desired to see the things that you see and have not seen them, and to hear the things that you hear and have not heard them. <clears throat> and behold, a certain lawyer stood up, tending him and saying, Master, what must I do to possess eternal life? But he said to him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? He answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, and with thy whole soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said to him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among robbers, who also stripped him, and having wounded him, went away, leaving him half dead. <clears throat> and it chanced that a certain priest went down the same way, and seeing him passed by. In like manner also a Levite, when he was near the place, and saw him, passed by. But a certain Samaritan, being on his journey, came near him, and seeing him, was moved with compassion. And going up to him, bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and setting him upon his own beast, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the next day he took out two pence, and gave to the host, and said, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou shalt spend over and above, I at my return will repay thee. <clears throat> Which of these three, in thy opinion, was neighbor to him that fell among the robbers? But he said, He that showed mercy to him. And Jesus said to him, Go and do thou in like manner. Please be seated. <clears throat> Which of these three, in thy opinion, was neighbor to him that fell among the robbers? We are called to do good to all people we come in contact with, whether friend or foe. Jesus also advises us to love our enemies and to do good to those that hate us. Where there is a good deed to be done, let us just do it, and not consider whether or not the person we are helping is worthy in our own eyes. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God <clears throat> with thy whole heart, and with thy whole soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. We must give God everything we have and are, for all that we have and are came from Him in the first place. Basically, we belong completely to God. We are God's property. He gave us free will so that we can recognize this fact and truly love Him. You cannot love if you do not have the ability to hate. When we hold anything back from God, we, in essence, are hating God. And the main demonstration of love is sacrifice. Love does not consist in words, but in actions. 
If I say that I love you, then ignore your desires and wishes. I prove myself a liar. Do we say to God, O oh Lord, I love you, then deny it by our actions? We need to examine our consciences on this matter quite closely. Since God is our supreme good, He must be the center of our lives. He